In 1886, a pharmacist known as John Stith Pemberton invented a drink to relieve headaches, and it was sold in pharmacies. The drink was made from the cocoa leaf and caffeine from the cola nut, so the name Coca-Cola was suggested. After two years, in 1888, Asa Griggs Candler, who ran a small pharmacy, bought the Coca-Cola formula for just $238.98. In 1892, he formed the Coca-Cola company and there was no turning back. Today, the Coca-Cola company is worth around $256 billion and it has over 86,000 employees. Want to know how Asa Griggs Candler transformed a $238.98 worth of formula, which is only sugar and formula, into a $256 billion business? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinary successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Asa Griggs Candler was born on December 30, 1851, in the town of Villarica, Georgia. His parents, Samuel Charles Candler and Martha Candler, had 11 children, Asa being the eighth. His father was a property owner who had served as a member of the South Carolina legislature. Asa grew up in a Christian family and developed a religious inclination early on in his life. He began his education when he was five years old. He studied at school for only five years, though. By the time he was 10, the U.S. Civil War had broken out. The war ravaged the southern states and his family's income dwindled greatly. Asa's parents decided to take him off school so he could be educated at home. As a teenager, Asa had gained enough knowledge to know he wanted to pursue a career in medicine. However, he gave up an opportunity to attend Emory College so his brother could attend. He really wanted to become a doctor but knew his parents could not afford to support his education, so he instead opted to become a pharmacist. In 1870, Asa Candler began an apprenticeship with Dr. Best and Dr. Kirkpatrick. He shadowed them at the pharmacy, learning about the profession and gaining an understanding on how to mix medicinal drugs. He later moved to Atlanta in search of better opportunities. In 1876, Candler partnered with Marcellus Hallman to open Hallman & Candler, a pharmacy. Candler then began to buy patents for products such as perfumes, mouthwash, and blood balm. He would buy the patents from their owners, manufacture the products internally, then sell at a tidy markup. Over time, his retail and wholesale drugstore became profitable. He would soon achieve even greater success with another product, a sweetened, carbonated drink named Coca-Cola. In 1888, Candler met John Stealth Pemberton, a biochemist and the creator of a sweet, carbonated drink called Coca-Cola. He sold it at a pharmacy called Jacob's Pharmacy. He made Coca-Cola by mixing carbonated water with a base syrup whose ingredients included coca leaves, cola nut extracts, sugar, and caffeine. Drugstore soda fountains were very popular in the United States back then. Many thought carbonated water was beneficial to their health. Pemberton initially marketed his Coca-Cola drink as a pain and stress reliever. It sold for five cents a glass at Jacob's Pharmacy. Customers bought about nine glasses a day. After drinking the fountain water, Candler was immediately taken by it and wanted to purchase the formula. At the time, Pemberton had ill health and was selling the formula. He had even already sold versions of it to two other business people. However, Candler was still interested in the drink and made an offer to buy the formula. Pemberton acquiesced and initially sold him the formula while retaining the rights to the name Coca-Cola. However, Candler wanted the formula, patents, and rights to the name. Over a series of transactions from 1888 to 1892, he bought all of them for about $2,300. Once Candler had purchased the formula in 1888, he started modifying it to improve the product's taste. He removed some of its ingredients and enhanced the manufacturing process. These resulted in a product with a better flavor. He began marketing it in 1891. Kendler first marketed the beverage in local publications and calendars. In 1892, he set the marketing budget for Coca-Cola at $11,000. The beverage's sales grew tenfold that year. Recognizing the potential of the drink, Kendler sold his pharmacy for $50,000 and chose to focus exclusively on the beverage. He partnered with his brother John Kendler and three other people to form the Coca-Cola Company in Georgia in 1892. The company had an initial capitalization of $100,000. They then registered the Coca-Cola trademark with the U.S. Patent Office in 1893. That same year, the company paid its first dividend of $20 per share. In 1894, Candler built the company's first syrup manufacturing plant outside Georgia. He built it in Dallas, Texas. In 1895, he opened two others in Chicago, Illinois and Los Angeles, California, while partnering with distributors to distribute the syrup to pharmacies all over. Candler was selling Coca-Cola in all states within the territory of the United States. In 1896, Candler approved the use of clocks and soda fountain urns to market Coca-Cola. 
In 1898, as the company continued growing, Candler built a three-story building to serve as the company's headquarters. However, it proved inadequate as the company moved to larger buildings five times over the next 12 years. In 1899, Candler sold the rights to bottle Coca-Cola in most parts of the United States for $1. He sold the rights to Benjamin Thomas and Joseph Whitehead. The low price reflected Candler's belief that bottled beverages would not take on. He believed that people preferred drinking carbonated drinks in pharmacies as was the norm in that period. However, much to his amusement, bottled Coca-Cola caught on. Thomas and Whitehead built the first bottling plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1899. They built a second in Atlanta in 1900. In 1899, Candler began exporting Coca-Cola to Cuba. In 1901, he was selling it in Europe. While Candler was a good druggist, his real talent was marketing and promotion. He grew Coca-Cola's sales budget from $11,000 in 1892 to $100,000 in 1901 and $1 million in 1911. He plastered the name Coca-Cola on everything, from clocks to fans. He even had pharmacies selling the drink include its name in their apothecary scales. Candler hired Coca-Cola salespeople to travel around the country to pharmacies and ensure the owners were displaying Coca-Cola signs prominently and mixing the syrup with carbonated water properly. The salespeople also gave away free Coca-Cola coupons to people to try out the drink and then gave reluctant pharmacies the first syrup barrel free. The reluctant pharmacy owners would later contact the company to purchase their second barrel after customers finished the first. In 1900, Candler hired music hall performer Hilda Clark as the company's first celebrity promoter. She appeared in posters, bookmarks, and trays advertising Coca-Cola. This was one of the first celebrity endorsements in the United States. In 1904, Candler began marketing Coca-Cola in the magazines. Some of the early slogans he used included, Good all the way down, Good to the last drop, Palate pleasing, and Coca-Cola revives and sustains. In 1906, he even used the slogan, The Great National Temperance Beverage, singling out Coca-Cola as a non-alcoholic drink when the United States was going into prohibition. In 1904, Coca-Cola's annual sales reached 1 million gallons. That year, Candler hired another celebrity to endorse Coca-Cola, famed opera singer Lillian Nordica. He went on to sign baseball players as promoters, beginning Coca-Cola's long association with athletes. Coca-Cola's success attracted dozens of imitators who used names such as Coca-Nola, Coca-Cola, and Coke. He tried to distinguish his straight-sided bottles with a diamond-headed shape in 1906, but competitors imitated that as well. He therefore decided to change the shape of the bottle, making it clearly distinguishable from competitors. In 1915, Coca-Cola bottles agreed to start a challenge to design a unique bottle. The Root Glass Company eventually created the company's iconic curved bottle shape. It was rolled out in 1916, and by 1920, all bottlers, over 1,200 of them, were using the contour bottle. By 1913, Candler had grown Coca-Cola so much that it had 2,300 wholesalers and 415,000 retailers. It even had a bottler in the Philippines, its first Asian location. In 1916, Candler retired from the company to run for mayor of Atlanta. He won. In 1919, he gave most of his shares in Coca-Cola to his children. Besides serving as head of Coca-Cola and mayor of Atlanta, Candler was a prominent real estate developer. In 1906, Candler built Atlanta's tallest building. At the time, it was 17 stories. He called it the Candler Building. He also built the Candler Building in New York in 1912 and founded Central Bank and Trust Corps in 1906. It ran until its sale to Citizens and Southern National Bank in 1922. For example, he donated more than $7 million to Emory University and additional money to Emory Hospital. After the Great Atlanta Fire of 1917, he provided personal loans to rebuild the city's water and sewage lines. In 1922, he donated more than 50 acres of land to the city of Atlanta to build Candler Park. Candler suffered a stroke in 1926 that greatly affected his health. He passed away on March 12, 1929. Asa Griggs Candler from the early stage had a passion for becoming a doctor, but due to his parents not being able to afford his college fees, he opted to become a pharmacist. Sometimes in life, you want to become something, but something better is written. In the case of Asa Griggs Candler, he wanted to become a doctor, but it was written that he would become a pharmacist and would buy the greatest formula of all time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.